and one of our biggest struggles was sitting week after week with different people from different parts of, of Chicago and just having them read the script and just be telling us bluntly, like, okay, this this just sounds this way. This is just like, this doesn't work. This is not, like, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have voices from the community to, to reflect on what we were creating while we were creating it throughout the entire process, mm-hmm. which was absolutely necessary. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like there was a tremendous amount of work that went into the the, the writing and the development even before the cameras you know started up so that's tremendous and as a viewer I, you know I can attest that it really does feel authentic anyone who has a sibling in one of those early scenes seeing the brothers interact with each other you know waking up in the morning and pranking each other um, I think a lot of us can relate to that but then the film shifts into experiences maybe those of us who don't live in certain areas experience and you're immediately drawn in in a way that you might not be with other mediums. So both of you in the process of this film wore multiple hats. And for those of us who don't have experience with filmmaking, can you give us some insight on what it's like behind the camera as a director or as a producer? And were there any surprises in the process of making this film? Okay, I'll talk from a producer point of view. <laughs> so I was uh, the creative producer. So part of that involved um, from the writing process, putting down the story, basically the structure of the story. That's a treatment, which we do. I gave um, I gave notes to the director, the writer, writer direct in this case, which is Emily, on what we should do when it comes to like character development, um, environment, building on the environment, and just like making sure that the story is complete from beginning to end we did a lot of sessions together where we sat down and we just like talk about okay how do we write this and how does this scene sound what do we need what kind of language do we need to add into the script for it to sound more real for it to sound more passionate for it to bring out what we're trying to do so that's one part i did a couple of other things which sometimes producers don't do (laughs) but I kind of like ended up helping out with, which included, um, let's say, casting, the casting scenes. We had a casting manager, but I assisted in that as well because casting is a very important part of a film. And it was very keen, like for us uh, to have the right type of actors to come into this film because what we wanted to bring out was two brothers and we needed them to have that chemistry. Michael and and Trey in the film, which is, um, they play by, uh, Michael is played by Leslie, and Trey is played by um, Jabari. They had a certain chemistry from uh, when we paired them together the first time to do a read, and that was kind of like why we ended up picking them. Apart from that, I also helped out with, um, basically producers are, a producer is an all-around manager. That's all a producer is. So we help with the creative part, you kind of like have an input in that. Apart from that, one of the main roles of a producer is bringing the team together. One major one major thing which the producer does is um, in post-production, which includes working with um, the director, working with the editor, um, post-production team, including sound design, including music, um, and just like making sure the music uh, fits in well with the film. And finally, making sure that when it's now done, and everything has been mixed together, the sound has been mixed, the color has been corrected. The producer basically handles everything from pre-production to post to marketing, festival runs. So right now we're doing festival runs. And I'm also like like very hands-on on that as well. That's um, a mouthful of what I do. I did in the film, and I'm still doing. Yay! Thank you, Callisto, for all of your hard work. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I, when I talk about making a film in which I had never really made a super formal film, if you will, before grad school, I made my own stuff, um, but primarily worked as a solo filmmaker. And so being able to experience this world of making a film with a team on a set, going to location was really incredible for me. Um, and right, this all culminates in your thesis film. And so Kalista and I were lucky to work together, I think, because it was a joint thesis, meaning that we both invested equally and um, we both could give all of our time to it. And when there's two people giving their time, it, of course, makes it that much better. 
we, you know, got the script done, which we, we really didn't wrap up until, you know, really close to shooting, to be honest, just because, you know, you continue to find things that you think can improve and, and they surely can. And of course, it depend, it also depended on whatever location we found for whatever scene. And this was a multi-location shoot. And so it was a really intensive process as far as that goes. So yeah, wrote the script. My role as a director was to also figure out how we were going to shoot this thing, right? And so I write up a shot list, which means me essentially just visualizing um, whatever I wrote. So for instance, the bike scene, we see uh, the two brothers on one bike. And so I had to figure out what shots do we want to get to capture that moment. So that could be a wide shot, which is just you know, we'll see them maybe middle of the screen and then we'll see a bunch of houses in the background. We'd also want a close up of their faces, maybe the tires, maybe the handlebars. And then it's me working with our uh, director of photography page, like Cluster mentioned, who's amazing. Um, And we had multiple meetings to figure out how we we wanted to shoot this, um, how we were going to accomplish that from the lighting to what camera we wanted to use. And she had her own team of folks to make sure that you know, that was all captured when we were shooting. So yeah, we had a really big crew and and a really amazing cast to make all of that happen. And then after, it's of course working, as Cluster said, with our post-production team for the edit, um, for the sound design, and then, you know, reaching that that point where we say, okay, we're happy with the film, let's, uh, let's call it good. And then right now we're working on um, a film festival run. So fingers crossed. Chicago, the Windy City, the city of broad shoulders, the second city, is complicated. Known for its legacies of segregation and political corruption, Chicago has a lot to grapple with. On Chicagoland, we bring you conversations with activists, journalists, politicians, and others who are working to address these issues. You can find Chicagoland wherever you listen to podcasts. From University of Chicago Public Policy Podcasts, this is Chicagoland. Um, This is a public policy podcast, of course. And as you mentioned, this film can be a really useful conversation starter for communities or to introduce audiences to some of these issues here in Chicago and elsewhere. Um, Who is your intended audience and what are your hopes for this film as you try to put it out there? Oh, so um, our intended audience, uh, firstly, as Emily had mentioned, that there is a huge um, racial part, which um, the film kind of like wants to um, like focuses on not intentionally um, and that is one of the or as Emily would love to point out the whites of Barbia because they don't have this experience so they don't see it and they don't interact with it Chicago is very, a very interesting city it has so much aspect so much life to it but at the same time there's so much which is just like swept under the rug like nobody wants to deal with it Apart from white suburbia, our other uh, like focus is on policymakers. You know, the people who can actually make policies to change, uh, like uh, environmental situations in neighborhoods. The people who have a voice when it comes to how um, the economic uh, benefits of different parts of Chicago, and basically how well schools can be funded. So one other aspect which um, is our target in one way or another is basically education in in Chicago and um, public public schools have been getting less funding uh, over the past few years and it's really affected a lot of schools in the south side and I know as you Chicago which is like in the south side they see that every day where schools are getting closed in um, I think from the 70th, 70th street going down there are a couple of schools which have been closed and they're trying to open, they're calling them bigger schools. But the thing is, they're making kids now move from one neighborhood to another, which is uh, moving from one kind of like risky environment to another without this. And they have to think about it. Not It's not like the guys making the policies because they can drive there. But sometimes like these kids, they have to think about their security. How? How will they get to school? And the parents have to think about this as well. I'm sure, like, it's always in the news where you find, like, um, they have uh, parent volunteers to make sure that they walk kids to school so that no, um, nothing bad happens. Those are part of our 
target as well. Just the fact that policymakers, especially for education in Chicago, they need to be a little bit more aware and sensitive to the kind of like environments which are in the South side and even the West side. And I think also in the, some parts in the North that when it comes to like education and how kids have access, it's better if they have more schools as opposed to like closing schools and then like not providing um, closer solutions. Basically, they're making kids just go further, like either further down or further to a different neighborhood to get access to good education. The audience question is always super tricky. I think every filmmaker wants their audience to be the entire world, right? Like we want to have the biggest impact possible. Taking on a social justice issue. One thing, one issue you'll find in a lot of social justice circles is that often the way we talk about issues is just preaching to the choir. So we're not actually like injecting anything into different circles of conversation. We're not really opening hearts and minds that aren't already open. And so I think for us, one of our big goals was how do we do that? How do we reach these suburban white people who are not talking about these issues because they do make them uncomfortable and they probably don't feel like they have a lot of power to cause change. Or maybe they are just super racist and they're not willing to see that this is a multi-pronged issue. It's not based in someone's character. And us getting that, this film, into those circles of people is really about what we're doing now, right? So it's like, how do we make sure we're screening the film um, in areas of Chicago where folks might not be talking about these things? Uh, but then, of course, whoever you see in the film will also be your audience. So we think that this will probably speak to, we hope it'll speak to youth um, that are growing up in these circumstances. And hopefully it will, you know, help them talk about issues, too. But what we really want to do is screen the film with a group that's doing on the ground work on the south or west side of Chicago regarding um, implementing better educational policy to increase funding and essentially just improve opportunities for youth that are growing up in situations like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. Representation of populations that aren't always on our screens is so critical. And it's, it's a challenge center, centering marginalized and vulnerable populations without preaching to the choir and making sure it reaches communities elsewhere. Uh, and so I think you know, your film does a great job making it accessible to folks who may not be aware or tuned into what's ha happening in other neighborhoods of Chicago. Um, for f listeners who are interested in seeing the film, connecting with its uh, narrative, are you going to be participating at any film festivals here in the Midwest in the coming months? Yes, we are. Um, we are. We have submitted for um, Chicago International Film Festival. It happens around um, in October. So we're hoping to get in on that. Um, they have an amazing um, section in the the whole showcase of the festival. It runs for about two weeks. They have a Black Perspective showcase. So that usually runs, I think, the first week, and then they have a special selection. So hopefully we'll get in on that. Apart from that, um, if you would really want to see the film, you can always go to Columbia College Chicago. Um, 1104 South Wabash, the graduate office will, uh, with a request, they will be able to like provide you with a copy and maybe wait, watch it in the school though, like not go with a copy out. Um, apart from that, we are also showing, uh, we got a grant from the Wiseman Fund. I think Emily will talk more about that and how if it's still on and you can go and like maybe see a little bit of the film, the trailer and all that. We will have updates on our news feed, on um, our website, on any other festivals which we um, have um, entered and hopefully we'll be screening a, a few of them. Yeah. Yeah. Our website's actually AmericanLifeShortFilm.com. Um, and then we are currently figuring out the other festivals we want to apply to as well. Um, but Chicago International is our is our number one that we'd like to get into. Great. So for our listeners who are interested, we'll be sure to post details on the UC3P uh, social media pages and other show notes to help you connect with the film American Life. Emily and Kalisto, thank you so much for joining us today and for your time and your experience. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Wonderful, wonderful conversation and experience. Thank you. It's been an honor. Let's keep changing the world one policy at a time. Pop, 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 pop.